Hello, I'm Glenn Herlihy. I'm a co-founder of the Beacon Food Forest here in Seattle, Washington. We are building a two acre farm here based on permaculture principles and we look to gather our community together around food, learn how to grow food, propagate food. We also look to educate our community in how to uh, bring food to our attention as an important global aspect of our culture and create a genetic bank for propagating more food throughout the neighborhood and the community. We're still building this project right now, still laying in a lot of the hardscaping, but as you can see behind me, we've done raised beds that are ADA accessible beds for people in wheelchairs or have a hard time uh, physically doing gardening. And we've planted them with pumpkins to, because the sun was shining and we needed to uh, get something in the beds. Uh, to my right, you're looking at terraces that will be pea patch family plots. Each family will get a 10 by 10 piece of land that they can grow whatever they want. And as a part of that, they get to have a little bit of public land to put food on their tables. If you follow me over here, uh, this is the upper bench, which will be a lot of the pea patch and children's growing area over here, a children's educational center and some community plots that the community will decide what they'd like to see growing. But down below there, we have about an acre of what is a true food forest. And we've planted the trees, but we have yet to plant the understories. This will be a farm of trees, shrubs, perennials, herbs, vines, ground covers that will mostly be edible, but they'll also be crafting plants and nitrogen fixing plants, insectary plants, plants that attract beneficial insects for our other plants. We have two beehives down there going right now. In the future, we'll see an upper story of nut trees and fruit trees down to a layer of dwarf trees, dwarf fruit trees into a layer of different edible shrubs and perennials and so forth. So we look to create a forest of food and useful plants, but it's also an ecosystem that is self-supportive. It's all the plants have multiple functions that will help the whole system grow and be healthy and manage its own pest problems and create a, a habitat for many different species, but be edible as well. My motivation to bring this project in has a lot to do with the nature deprivation that I see in our children and their ability to understand where their food comes from and how that food gets to their plate. By creating a local food source, we are teaching and demonstrating to our children and to our community the benefits of having this local food source. Not only that, we can grow organic food right in our neighborhood and make it affordable, but we can also show our community that this food doesn't need to come from thousands of miles away. We can actually do it right here in our neighborhoods. This alleviates a lot of pressure on the global system and the food systems that we have in place now are not promoting local food growing. I uh, was a gardener, a landscape gardener for 20 years, still am, but I see myself as a community activist. Uh, I moved here 20 years ago and saw the need for green space in this neighborhood and a group of community activists like myself helped form uh, Jefferson Park in this area and it was after that park was formed that we saw this land uh, having opportunity because of its exposure to the sun and exposure to the community to form a urban agricultural project. And I just had no fear behind the idea that this needed to move forward. I have the ability to work with governments and we need this project here. We need a project that can demonstrate to our community how to grow food. And 
it's taken me a long time and it's required that I step out of my comfort zone many times. Uh, I've been fearful of public speaking. I've been fearful of facilitating uh, community meetings and having it go smoothly. But I just, I just had to step out of my comfort zone and start working. And it's been now four years working on this project and I feel like I'm more comfortable with my public speaking and I feel like I'm more comfortable with my community. I know many more of my people in my community and I know many more of my government officials and I've learned to look for my allies and brush off the naysayers and brush off the negativity and just stick with what's positive about this project and how that positive network can work to bring out a project like this. There's always difficulties. There was many roadblocks in this project. Uh, there was many people who didn't believe we could do it, that said no in the beginning, but we worked around them. We went and we found who, who are our allies? Who are your allies in government and in your community? And how can you activate them to come together and pull something like this off? When it comes down to it, it's the people right here, right now, showing up to do the work. And that's what makes it happen.